there, Internet. I'm Troy the Max Extreme. And I'm Ghost Hunter Dave. And this is Imperious Rex. You got it. Today's show, we'll be discussing Grant Morrison's new X-Men. Oh, brother. <laughs> so, hold on to your pants. They may shoot right off. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> And what would Imperious Rex be without us going on and on about Grant Morrison and every book he's ever written, oh, ever? We'd be doing a disservice. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> a flat-out disservice. Yes. So, you know, it's funny, too, because Imperious Rex first started here in the basement yeah. as just a book club among gentlemen. Right. There was a mysterious third member of the right. group who's yes. yet to make an appearance. Yes. But just three dudes chatting about comics. Yep. And I believe the inaugural... Book clubbing. Yes. Clubbed with uh, <laughs> New X-Men. Right. That's what kicked off the whole thing. It was. So and we've come full circle, and now we can die. <laughs> yeah, this is where we all end ourselves. Yeah. But here we are with New X-Men. Came out 2001 uh -huh. uh, and ran to 2004, and this was hot off 20th Century Fox's first X-Men film. Right. And you can actually see a lot of what... The X-Men film brought with this new X-Men run as well, with the all-new costume changes. Black leather ensembles. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, maybe that might be about it, because <laughs> the team is not the same at all. No, but they did kind of pare down the team to mm -hmm. maybe like five key characters. Yeah. They yeah. had a couple people kind of come and go, but that was the core <laughs> team. Yeah. And it's uh, definitely highlighted by Frank Quitely's art as well. Oh, man, yeah. He can tell a story... Like, superbly, no words at all, and you know exactly what's going on. Yeah. His sequential art is, I think, is by far one of the best artists out there doing comic work today. And when him and Morrison get together, magic happens. Yeah. yeah. And not the magic that Morrison conjures up in his, <laughs> right. in his, you know, his breakfast nook. This right. is comic book magic. Yeah. This like is, in like All-Star Superman. Symbiosis. Oh, yeah. Flex Mentallo. Mm -hmm. Those guys. Mm -hmm. That is a good pairing. Mm -hmm. Anything they do, you know you're in for a treat. That's true. So with the launch of New X-Men, this was kind of brought on by um, Joe Quesada at that point, was kind of new as the editor-in-chief, and mm -hmm. he wanted to bring the X-Men back to their former glory. Mm -hmm. Like, they had a dip in the sales. This is 2001, so it's coming off the height of their popularity in the early 90s, <laughs> oh where God. everything was X-Men. <clears throat> yep. And then, you know, it just kind of, it, it dipped a little bit. It has mm -hmm. to. You couldn't get more popular than they were with the animated series and everything was going on. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they were just hoping to bring a little bit of that magic back. So mm -hmm. they went with Grant Morrison. I think they kind of baited him away from DC, which he was writing at that time. And they just kind of turned him loose and said, do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So he kind of revamped, cut it down to a core group of characters. Yep. And I believe he kind of picked out some classic storylines from, like, the Chris Claremont era and just did, like, his own spin on them. Mm. He didn't, like, reboot them or anything, but, like, there's a, a Shar Empire storyline. There's mm -hmm. a Sentinel storyline, mm -hmm. a Magneto storyline. He used these as kind of the basics as, like, all great X-Men stories involve these elements. Yeah. And then he did his own morrison -y spin on it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So it kicks off with E for Extinction, with uh, Quietly There on the mm -hmm. art duties. And I think this is probably the best yeah. of his oh, run. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. It's uh, mm -hmm. the introduction of Cassandra Nova, mm -hmm. Professor X's long-lost twin, mm -hmm. who he fought in the womb <laughs> yeah it's been a little while since i've read this um uh, or since i've read this Whew. we made it past the ultimate episode <laughs> but after that it's all downhill <laughs> um but no this is great great jumping on point they just mm -hmm. go right into it fighting sentinels and this one man it changed up the x-men landscape uh starting with genosha the home of the mutants yep getting demolished in yep. a very, like, 9-11 style attack. Yeah. Um, Emma Frost joins the team, and they also introduce the concept of the secondary mutation. Yeah. Bring in her, like, diamond skin that she can do, mm -hmm. and Beast's 
cat-like appearance. Yeah. Some other elements from Morrison's run that kind of had a long-lasting effect. Uh, Zorn, mm -hmm. for better or for worse. <laughs> yeah, for sure. The Stepford Cuckoos. Yeah. I don't know if they're really prevalent anymore, but they were know. pretty big in this. Mm -hmm. um, Beak. Oh my god, Beak. <laughs> Couldn't fan, turn a page without seeing Beak. Fan favorite. <laughs> oh man. Uh, Phantom X. Yep. It was kind of cool. He yeah. was in it for a while. Uh, Quentin Quire. Oh Pretty yeah. cool. Kid Omega. Um, and then, you know, all the usual tropes. Mm -hmm. Jean Grey dies. Um, Professor X can walk. Yep. And, and then, then he not can't. walk. <laughs> yep. Um... And um, ends with some Magneto uh, battling. Yeah. All the tropes. So they hit all the high points <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> in what you do in an X-Men book. Yes. They hit any low points for you? Yeah. There's some artists that when uh, Quietly is taking a break or he was behind, they fill in with another artist. Yeah. And I'm not going to call him out here. You can find out if you read it for yourself. But like a lot of his stuff I do not like. Yeah, it's very inconsistent on the artwork. But there are a couple really big names in there, too. Mm -hmm. uh, Phil Jimenez. Yep, he does, does a, a pretty big greats. run. Yep. Um, Mark Silvestri mm -hmm. does, I think, the last arc. Yep, which I, I really liked. Yeah, it was kind of his take on the Days of Future Past type of storyline. Yep. Which was more of an epilogue than, like, a final arc yep. to it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, there there's some standouts in there that are not great. Mm -hmm. Um Chris Bacalow is good. Not not one of the yeah. bad ones, but he's <laughs> yeah. in there and he's good. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, compared to Quietly, I think he really sets a tone of the book in this very kind of cool, like, it's hip to be square, like, type of universe that yeah. this X-Men thing takes place in. Like, yeah. the, the freaks are the new cool mm -hmm. in the Grant Morrison world of X-Men. The school is a school, again, at this right. point. It's not just a training academy for, yep. like, five people. Yeah, it's yeah. a full-on, like, populated school, yep. which is kind of cool. Yep, I like that. So what did you think of uh, the ending of this with Magneto? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> By the end of... Morrison's run, I don't think it was handled really well, because I know... I had heard somewhere that he had kind of lost interest in it by that point. I could definitely see yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> I heard, like, he, he was interviewed, and he said he didn't... He liked writing the X-Men, but he got burnt out, because, like, he didn't like putting them through so much turmoil. He's yeah. Like, I just wanted to have a good time. You know? I just want to be happy. Yeah, yeah And yeah. you can see that in his Superman and right. stuff. Like, super, he enjoys being Superman, but the X-Men, they're just constantly like ridiculed <laughs> oh, he's and their freaks down, and, yeah. yeah he just he wasn't enjoying himself i think and you could kind of tell by the end and there's a there's a twist -a rooney there with the character of zorn yeah which spoiler now Three, two <laughs> one zorn it turns out to be magneto yeah which apparently was planned all along but it really feels kind of shoe no way in. it could have been planned all he along. said it was i when I talked to him on the phone last week, he said it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but no, it does. It feels very out of place. And then Magneto, his Magneto is very old school, intentionally oh, yeah. so, I yeah. think. Because his whole run is very, like, modern. We're presenting new ideas. Yeah. X-Men should be blasting into the future. And Magneto kind of represents, like, the old school <laughs> thought process of comic books yeah. where, like... You gotta have your adversary, and they just want to take over the world. Yeah. And, and, like, Magneto was just, like, presented as an old geezer that was just, like, right. out of touch. And at, he, at one point, he's, like, having this big villainous monologue, and, like, Toad is like, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. He's totally just, like, a grandpa character that, like, turned down yeah. your music. Like, yeah. that's the slang you're yeah. using. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, he treats him, like, as a joke. Yeah. And, yeah, it was... I don't know, like... If you're really attached to him, I could see that being, like, a dropping-off point. Uh-huh. You know, I just take everything that Morrison writes as a Morrison thing, not, like, an established <laughs> character run. Right. So, I just see it as Grant Morrison's X-Men. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it was odd. And then he, uh, he kills Jean almost as, like, an afterthought. Yeah. And from what I understand, she's still dead from this. I could, yeah, I think so. Like 16, 17 years ago. She yeah. haven't brought her back yet? That's crazy. They have, like, like she came the, back, like, every week. <laughs> the young Jean Grey yeah. is now back and still doing stuff. Yeah, but I don't think the current 
or the old or whatever you'd call it in the X-Men. <laughs> I don't oh know. Oh my god, there's varying <laughs> levels of currency in uh, the X-Men universe, but yeah, I think she's still dead. Yeah. And then Magneto gets decapitated. And then Which they retcon made. it completely and say, like, <laughs> that wasn't Magneto. Yeah. But needless to say, he presented a lot of new ideas. He had a couple really cool arcs. Yeah. Um, and Marvel, despite having said, go crazy, immediately... Not let him go crazy. Yeah, <laughs> immediately regretted their decision and retconned a ton of the stuff that he did. Yeah. But really, mm. the new X-Men is, is, is a great read all the way through. Yeah, really refreshing. Especially, like surrounding it was just crap i guess yeah like this was another one that i kind of started reading when i got back into comics and mm. i remember the art style was jarring i was yeah. like ooh, i don't know if i like this right but it's like it caught my attention and right. i've come to love his art style but yeah, yeah for someone just picking up a comic book that they haven't read in 20 years yeah or it's so, not a house style or yeah anything. you're like what is this yeah. this is ugly and i'm not a huge fan of the x-men either and this is one of the first x-men books i read Maybe after Astonishing X Men, mm -hmm. which came after this. Yeah, almost right after. There was right. a, a, a low period between them, I think. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, Astonishing X Men by Joss Whedon and John right. Cassidy mm -hmm. picked up a ton of the plot threads from this. Yeah. Because while Marvel was trying to kind of retcon some of it, I think Joss Whedon wanted to save as much as he could because yeah. he really liked it. Right. And it definitely worked because I. There was. After reading New X Men. Um, I saw that like Cassidy was like cherry picking what he liked to make yeah. sure this keeps going. Uh -huh. And even though he took his own spin on it and got him out of the black cost, like the black leather, as they had mm -hmm. in the X Men movies, he put him back in their um, colorful costumes and made them yeah. all individuals again, which is really cool. Yeah, one really good X Men title, or it's an X Force title, is Rick Remender's. Yeah, that is one that a fairly current one that I've read and loved it. Yeah, uh, it has one of my favorite X Men characters, Angel. Yep, Archangel and this whole arc of the Dark Angel saga where he becomes, like, the next Apocalypse character yeah. is excellent. And I think you could just pick it up and read it without really a whole lot of backstory to it. Right. But that's the thing. Like, there's so so many X-Men, and they've done so many things, it's really hard to just jump in. Yeah. Especially when they're... they're their, you know, highest point in the 90s. Like, how do you even... <laughs> they had 20 books out. Yeah, and how do you even touch time. that? Yeah. Um, but, you know, new X-Men did that. It made it very right. accessible for new readers. You didn't yep. have to know a whole lot going in. And then uh, Astonishing X-Men kind of carried that through. Mm -hmm. So props to Grant Morrison for making an accessible title. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, but yeah, final thoughts on X-Men? Um, new X-Men, I would definitely say give it a shot. Um, maybe it'll get you into X-Men. Maybe it'll... You'll stay the same opinion on X-Men. <laughs> but either way, I do think it's a great read for the art alone. If you, mm -hmm. Quietly's art is just amazing in this book. So yeah, that was new X-Men. What'd you think? Yeah, we, tell us what you thought. We're not sure what we think, <laughs> so <laughs> tell the, us what we yeah. think, too. Uh, but until next time, we have a very interesting comic topic. I've been Short of the Max Extreme. And I've been Ghost Hunter Dave. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye! <laughs>